After post graduation, is there a scarcity of jobs in dermatology? Is there an oversaturation in dermatology, particularly cosmetology, due to the prevalent quackery in the field? What are the options and future prospects in dermatology after post graduation? Want to know the answers to these very pressing questions? Let's find out. Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Anmol, I'm a doctor based in India and on this channel I talk about all the things relevant to being a doctor and a dermatologist in India that I learnt along the way. So the NEET PG counselling is about to start and amidst that I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions about the scope of dermatology especially after doing MD and DNB. There are a lot of opinions about dermatology as a branch that I've heard, uh, the most popular ones being uh, there's a shortage of jobs in dermatology after doing post-graduation. Uh, also that it's become oversaturated, especially cosmetology because of a lot of non-doctors who are actively practicing in the field. Are these facts or just myths? And finally, the big question, once you've completed your post-graduation, what are your options? I believe these are some really valid concerns and questions that people have about the branch. And that's why in today's video, I'm going to be answering all of these to the best of my abilities. I've also taken the opinion of other people like my seniors who've been in the field much longer and understand it better. So this is not just my opinion, this is more or less a consensus from other practicing dermatologists in the field as well. I have some answers for you today, let's get started. After completing your MD in Dermatology, what are your options? You probably already know this, but I'll just list it out for you, whatever options are available and the ones that I'm aware of. You can work at a government hospital as a senior resident and eventually a professor. Similarly, you can work at a private medical college starting as a senior resident and gradually getting promoted. You can set up your own private clinic and start private practice. Or if you don't have the space for setting up your own clinic, you can always join a poly clinic and start your private practice through that. You can work at a private dermatology clinic or at a private hospital. You can do a fellowship in your field of interest. So these are a couple of options that you can go for, uh, especially in India. If you wish to settle abroad, that's a whole different process and I'm not going to get into that right now. But yeah, basically these will be the future options for you once you've finished your MD. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is that, is that there are quite a few options to explore after MD. This is a very common and a very popular opinion that I've heard many times people saying that after post-graduation, there's a scarcity of jobs in dermatology. It's difficult to find jobs. It's also one of the main reasons why a lot of people are reluctant to take up dermatology because they think there are fewer jobs. So is it true? Well, it's not completely untrue. Now, what exactly does a scarcity of jobs after post-graduation mean? I'll explain it to you because this is something that even I have understood just recently. At government uh, and even some private medical colleges, the number of seats for senior residency or for assistant professor are relatively less as compared to other specialties. Look at this list of vacancies for different branches for senior residency or SRship at a government medical college in India. You can see that the number of seats for other branches like for example anesthesiology, medicine, surgery, pediatrics, radiology, you can see the number of seats that are available and then you can see the number of seats for dermatology, just two seats. Of course, that does make sense because the number of seats in NEET PG for post-graduation in dermatology are also much less compared to these other specialties. So the number of MD pass-outs are also lesser in dermatology compared to other branches. There are a lesser number of seats for post-graduation for JR ship and therefore lesser number of seats for SR ship. That's why I don't see it as a particularly big disadvantage. If the number of PG seats are less, the number of SR seats are also proportionately less. But yes, that is definitely a slight downside, you know, because there are this, the, the number of seats for SR ship in dermatology or for AP are much, much less compared, even, even compared to the people who pass out from dermatology. So it can definitely get competitive because the number of seats after post-graduation for SR ship, etc. are way too less. Similarly, at private hospitals also, the vacancies in dermatology are much fewer. So yeah, fewer number of jobs at private hospitals as well. Now, is this a strong enough reason to not pursue the branch altogether? I don't think so. If you're really interested in the subject and the branch, I'd say go for it. The only advice that I would want to give you, something that I wish I understood sooner, is that start building your knowledge on the subject and start building your CV as early as possible. Because of the fewer number of seats, it can get competitive. So build a good CV from the beginning 
build a good knowledge of the subject and that would help you get any job you want. If you wish to start your own private clinic, then all of these concerns are not valid for you. You have nothing to worry about. The above issue of jobs is obviously not applicable to private practice. There's good money and getting patients is usually not that difficult. So there's a good scope for a successful private practice in most cases. This is another question that many people now want to know more about before taking up dermatology. People are concerned that since there are now a lot of non-doctors or non-dermads practicing cosmetology uh, there's a lot of unhealthy competition in the field it's becoming oversaturated um, so would it be wise to choose dermatology as a branch at this point i'm not a practicing cosmetologist yet but i've spoken with a couple of dermatologists who are actively practicing cosmetology very successfully and i think that's why i can answer this question firstly dermatology is much much more than just cosmetology there's core clinical dermatology pediatric dermatology, dermatosurgery. So there are many other amazing options to explore during and after MD, apart from cosmetology. I know aesthetics and cosmetology are very much trending right now, but I think these other specialties are very interesting and uh, there's a lot of good scope for success in these specialties as well. So step one would be to just get a fresh perspective about the branch as being something more than just cosmetology. Coming to the issue at hand, yes, there are non-dermads, quacks who are actively practicing cosmetology. As a result of that, there is a lot of unhealthy competition in the market of cosmetology. People are actually consulting them uh, due to a lack of awareness and IADVL, which is the National Society for Dermatology, is actively fighting against these practices, trying to create awareness about the issue. So there's a possibility that maybe in the future, the general public will be more sensitized and more aware about these issues. Things might change for the better. But the more important thing to remember is that in the long run, a quack can never replace a certified dermatologist. The difference will always show in the outcome it's important to remember that if you want to pursue aesthetics and cosmetology as a dermatologist, you will always have an edge over someone who's not a doctor. It will obviously show in your work. So I, I don't think it's something to be that concerned about and it's definitely not something that should stop you from pursuing the field of your choice. You need to have faith in your training, your education and your capabilities as a dermatologist. So these were a couple of commonly asked questions about the branch. I hope that I've addressed your queries and concerns satisfactorily. If you have any more doubts, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. Uh, my handle's on the screen right now, or you can also email me at this email ID. If you like my content, please like, share, and subscribe for more such videos. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.